come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the sun of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling. But he bids me go through the voice of woe. His voice to me is calling. And he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Together, let us lift our hearts and our spirits in preparation for the hearing of the Gospel. The Gospel lesson is taken from the Gospel according to John, John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18, from the Richmond Lattimore translation. Early, on the first day of the week when it was still dark, Mary the Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from it. So she ran back until she came to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken our Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple came out and went to the tomb. The two ran together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first, and stooped and looked in and saw the wrappings lying there, but he did not go inside. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and he went into the tomb, and he saw the wrappings lying there, and the napkin, which had been on his head, lying not with the wrappings, but away from them, and rolled into a ball. And the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also entered it, and he saw and believed. For they never had yet known of the scripture that he was to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. But Mary stood by the tomb lamenting. And as she lamented, she stooped and looked inside the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, Lady, why are you lamenting? She said to them, because they have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have put him. So speaking, she turned about, and she saw Jesus standing there, and did not know it was Jesus. 
Jesus said to her, Lady, why are you lamenting? Whom do you seek? She thought he was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you took him away, tell me where you put him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him, Rabboni, which means master. Jesus said to her, Do not hold me, since I have not yet gone up to my father. Go to my brothers and tell them I am going up to my father and your father and my God and your God. Mary the Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy Easter from my tastefully appointed studio in my studio apartment, which most of the time functions as my shoebox of a bathroom. <laughs> well, these are not usual days, and we do what we must. Amen? I hope that during your unusual days that all of you are doing well and keeping well. I hope if you're with spouses or partners or roomies and or your kids, that nobody is inspiring anybody else to climb the walls, and that includes our fur babies, and yes, even our rep reptile pet babies, for those of us who have them. I hope for all of us, in all of our households, that we're not only reminded of why we love our loved ones, I hope that we're finding even more reasons to understand how truly blessed we are by their presence in our lives, these lives which we build together, these lives which shelter us. I hope that each day, each hour, is surprising us with brand new reasons to love. I hope that we're all keeping busy in the ways which sustain us, but not in the ways that make us frantic. There's already a surplus of that frantic vibe all around us at this current moment in time. We don't need to add any more of that into the world. Amen? And I hope that all of us are getting little glimpses of what is wonderful around us. That same loving hand of God still at work. I've had occasion to go out necessary short errands a time or two this week and I've had two of those moments quiet little glimpses tucked away into what ought to seem perfectly ordinary but those little glimpses worked on my heart like miracles a couple of days ago I was coming back from CVS late in the afternoon and something at the back corner of the property where my apartment sit caught my eye, so I had to go look. Back behind my apartment, when they plowed up the woods and built sports barn, they left a little strip of scrubby trees, and over the past fifteen-odd years, more have grown in there, and it's filled in. Anyway, almost back at the end of the property, under a couple of trees, is where my sweet kitty Scully has been buried for about eight years. There was a flat rock I found propped up, and for about a year, you could read her name on it. I'd written it with a sharpie. Well, f for several springtimes after she passed, I've gone out there with packets of seeds, or those little seed bombs that you can plant. I thought it would be nice for some random wildflowers to grow there. Nothing. Nothing I planted ever grew, and usually if I try to have any relationship with a plant, it will not live. So that didn't surprise me, but over time, the weather wore her name off her little headstone. Over more time, 
all of the rocks around her grave have shifted and I only know where she's buried because I buried her there. I can find it, but nature has basically taken that little grave back. And I don't guess I've taken a moment to go back there in several years. But what caught my eye a couple of days back was this. Several hardy little patches of some plant I have never seen, and not what I tried to plant at all that I know of, have sprung up there on either side of her grave. Strange and beautiful white flowers, and they were bright enough in the afternoon that from several carve lengths away, and tucked back in the undergrowth, I could see them, had to go see what they were. So Scully has flowers now. And I took such hope from that. This evening, which is actually Good Friday, and such are the logistics of speaking to you sweet people on video, which has to be processed and edited and put together and then uploaded, I had occasion to go back up at the, uh, the block again, and back, and I was startled by how beautiful and how healthy the trees looked. I mean, I took that same walk a couple of days ago, and they weren't what they are now. I could certainly tell that the spring pollen was doing its thing, but the air was so clear, and the leaves were so lush and green. And yet, all around us, in the atmosphere, is worry, and sorrow, and grief, and all those things. But that unexpected beauty and vitality, it's God at work, all around us, doing the exact opposite, opposite thing which our circumstances, real and serious circumstances, would have us believe is the whole story at the moment. The world tells a story where endings and finally, finality, and yes, sorrow and separation are necessary elements of the story. Because while we live, our lives are finite. We're mortal. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. But. The story God is telling, of which we are a part, is the story of life. And God created life, so we firmly believe. And when Mary of Magdala realizes that the gardener is not the gardener, but Jesus himself, she understands that God's story is bigger than the world's story, where the tomb and the lamentation seem to be the end. No. She hears her own name spoken by her Lord, and her vision clears. And when he tells her that he is going to my Father and your Father, and my God and your God, she understands that her own story will not end with lamentation either. Something powerful awaits her beyond. And she is a part of that. I believe, in this moment, that's what Jesus our Christ wants you and I to understand and to celebrate this Easter morning. Because this life ends. Beyond this life, we live. And within this life, he is sending us to the people. We have a message of that great hope that we have found in Him, and He needs for us to keep carrying that message, that hope, into this troubled world. It's an odd thing, this present time of trouble. The world's hearts are in an uproar. But it's a strangely quiet uproar. So many of us feel immobilized. So many of us feel helpless. But Jesus, our Emmanuel, God with us, calls you and I and every person if they have ears to hear, and he calls us by name. 
and Jesus, our present and risen Christ, as the song a few moments ago would say, bids us go through the voice of woe. We cannot afford to let our faith or our hearts or our spirits be immobilized, especially not now. May we trust God to sustain us and through the Spirit refresh and restore our sense of purpose and refresh and restore our courage so that our great hope will be a song with the power to push through and to overtake that voice of woe. I hope that you all are well. I hope that all of us remember that Jesus is telling those of us who follow him, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. May it be so. Amen. And, Alleluia.